Good morning, ESM. Hey, Uncle Richie here. Hey, it's Friday. Woo! You know what that means? It's Fist Pump Friday. Yes, we're recognizing kids. Faculty members have uh, elected these following students who have shown pride, and that is professionalism, respect, involvement, diversity, and excellence. Our first winner is Roman Gerber, a junior from Miss Corbett. Woo! We got Jay Nellis, a junior from Miss Ransom. Woo! We got Sophia Canzone, a senior from Miss Hillowa. Woo! We got Abby Road, a freshman from Mr. Brandon. Yeah! We got Grace Kakamo, a junior from Mr. Brandon. Woo! And Dylan Camps Dorada, a sophomore from Mrs. Oop and Mr. Jeffries. Great job, everybody. Hey, it's going to be beautiful out. Get outside. Get off that technology. Get out and enjoy the sunshine. Richie loves you. Good morning, everyone. Today is Friday the 14th. I'm Emily. And I'm Bennett. Let's take it to news. Good morning, ESM. Here are our top stories. On Wednesday, a new front was opened in the military showdown between the Israel Army and Palestinian militants in Gaza as a wave of violence between Jews and Arabs spread across several cities. Israel said it has assassinated 10 senior militants and continued to pound both military and residential areas across the Gaza Strip with airstrikes, while the Islamist groups Hamas and their allies continue to fire rockets into civilian areas across central and southern Israel. In other news, a uh, Manoa resident's house on Helfer, Hef, Helfer Lane caught on fire yesterday while the owner was out walking his dog. Crews from Manoa and Kirkville responded. His garage door had to be cut down and sustained damage inside. No one was injured in the fire. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everybody. I just would like to remind people, there's a lot of media that, that talks about changing of masks and that if you are vaccinated, you do not have to wear a mask. I just want to remind everybody that here at school, we have to follow the guidelines of the New York State Department of Health. And as of right now, we still have to wear masks. So when something changes, we will let you know. But again, just a reminder, these things do help. Please wear it. The ESM field hockey team will be running a t-shirt fundraiser in support of Mariska Gao, a freshman field hockey player here at ESM that was recently diagnosed with cancer and is currently receiving treatment. To order, you can go through the Papa Sports website, the link is included, or you can go through Coach Harris in the women's PE office or Miss Alexander. T-shirts are $10 to $14 depending on the size. And if you are ordering through the website, you can choose the local pickup option so that you do not need to pay shipping and we will contact you when the shirts come in. The Papa Sports Store and option to purchase through the program will end May 26th, so please have all money and orders in prior to that day. Thank you for your support. Seniors, tickets for the Senior Ball will be on sale in the main lobby from 8.30 to 8.45 every morning. The cost is $20. Either cast or check can be made out to the ESM Class of 2021. The National Honor Society is hosting a blood drive on Tuesday, May 18th from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. in the second gym. The need for blood is at an all-time high, so donations are critical. To register, please visit redcrossblood.org and use sponsor code ESMHS to find the drive and reserve your spot. Please email Mr. Mussolino at jmussolino at esmschools.org with any questions. Press the pause button before reacting. When you feel yourself getting mad, take a moment to notice what you're thinking. Then take a few deep breaths or count to 10 in your head. By giving yourself even just a few seconds before reacting, you can put some emotional distance between you and whatever is upsetting you. You might even realize that you're actually tense because of something else. Change your surroundings. Strong feelings are stressful. Strong feelings and stressful thoughts can make you feel trapped. Whether you're upset with someone in the same room as you or just angry at the world, 
sometimes physically relocating yourself can help you start to calm down. Go to another room or step outside for a few minutes of fresh air to help disrupt the track that your mind is on. Get it all out. Keeping your feelings bottled up never works. Allow yourself to be, sorry, allow yourself time to be angry and complain. As long as you don't focus on it for too long, venting can be a healthy outlet for strong emotions. You can open up to a trusted friend or write it all down in a journal. Sometimes it feels better to pretend to talk directly to someone or in the, or the situation that, sorry, or the situation that you're angry at, pick up an empty chair, pretend they're sitting in it, and say what you need to get off your chest. All right, and we'll have more tips for coping after weather. So here's some more tips and strategies to help you cope. Remember to release your built up energy. Many feelings can carry high amounts of energy. We store that energy and tension physically in our bodies. Exercise is a great way to get rid of extra energy and can improve your mood. Some people find grounding ex exercises like meditation or deep breathing helpful to calm these intense feelings, while others prefer more high impact activities like running or weightlifting. Think about what you usually do to decompress, like taking a hot shower or blasting your favorite music, and use the tools that you know work for you. Get organized. When things around you feel chaotic, it's often a lot easier to get frustrated and snap at people. Dedicate a few minutes each day to tidying, planning, or reorganizing, implementing a routine that can also help you feel more on top of things by adding structure and certainty to your daily life. Remember to reduce stressors whenever possible. Sometimes there's no way to completely get rid of a big problem, but there's often more than just one stressor contrib contributing to your frustration. Things like an overwhelming workload or an unhealthy relationship can help to make you feel on edge. See if you can make small changes in other areas of your today to make the day less burdensome. Now let's go to sports. In upcoming games, the boys and girls track teams have a meet at home against Oswego at 6. Boys play at 5 against Cortland, girls softball plays at 5 against Auburn, and boys lacrosse plays at Central Square at 7. I'm as well with your sports. Manage your expectations. Negative emotions often, often stem from people or situations not meeting your standards or assumptions. It's frustrating to let to feel let down, but recognize that you can't fully predict anyone else's behavior or how situations will play out. Shift your mental framework so that you aren't setting up yourself for disappointment. Now, one of the biggest methods that you can use for coping is actually just not being afraid to ask for help. So if you're working on trying to cope with what's going on in your life and still think and feel like you aren't moving forward, then it's time to look for some extra support. Going on alone can only add to the struggle sometimes. So remember to reach out to your family, friends, other important people in your life, or professionals for guidance and support. So with us today to talk a little more about that is um, the principal here, uh, Mr. Avellino. Good morning, Bennett and Emily. Thank mm -hmm. you for having me on the show this morning. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about asking for help, because I think a lot of times people do not ask for help because as a high school student, we're taught to really try to figure things out on your own. As we, as we grow up, as we go through elementary school and through middle school, you know, people tend to ask for a little more help back then. Uh, but now I really would like to encourage that, you know, as we look at the ages of, of our students, um, our survey that we just did, one in five students really would not ask for help. And I really want to encourage us to really think about asking for help. Um, sometimes it can, it can carry a stigma that perhaps maybe it may be a little bit embarrassing, but please get past that. 
because I know that when I'm working with, with somebody, if I'm in stress about something, um, asking for help helps me to process and get over and deal with whatever I'm dealing with. Yeah. I know that um, sometimes uh, when I'm feeling down or if I'm feeling stressed out, um, it's really helpful for me to ask my parents for help because they've been through a lot. They've been there for me my whole life. So I think that um, since I have someone that I can go to talk to, um, I think that really helps me out. Yeah, I would agree because um, I, although I'm 57, my, <laughs> I talk to my mom every morning at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. And she, somehow she always knows when I'm stressed or when I need to figure something out because she, she will say to me, what's going on? What's, tell me what's, talk to me about it. Yeah. So it helps me to ask for help and have that discussion as well. All right. So thank you. And Thanks. that's all that we got here for you guys today.